Again. Well, you do. You do have to play it one more time. Well, I get set up over here. You're still setting up? I'm setting up a little bit. Hello, everyone. Hey, y'all. There we go. Now, do you feel like you got it? Got it. We found it. We are live streaming. Hey! It's been a minute. It's been a minute, y'all. It's been a minute, hasn't it? First of all, hi. Hello, husband. Hi, husband. How are you? Oh, Isn't he cute? He's so cute. Try to be. I just shaved my you head. Did. I might be bleeding. Yeah, I just realized a little bit. I looked at it in the thing. I noticed you said shaved. I know. I shaved my head. What are we drinking tonight, Michael Shepard? Ciao, sangria. We are drinking sangria. This is my choice. Cheers. I said sangria. Mm. Oh, well, really good. that's just that's lovely. really, really, really good. I was thinking I was going to doctor it. I was going <laughs> to add some brandy to it or some. Sangria is so easy, y'all. Juice. Cut up an apple, cut up an orange. Without the peel, uh, throw whatever fruit you want into a big old. Did you do sugar? I did not do sugar. You're supposed to muddle it with sugar. According oh, to my recipe, that I, I didn't, gave I didn't do the sugar, sugar muddle. And I'd make a big old pitcher, pour in a bottle of red wine, a uh, cup of orange it's juice, a, it's a bit, quarter cup, it's, it quarter tart, brandy, the and then I put it in the refrigerator. But he forgot the sugar. He didn't. The recipe that is sugar? on my piece of paper. Do you want some sugar? It says brown I'll, I'll sugar. I'll give you some sugar. Here's some sugar, oh. baby. Mm-hmm. Some you can't sugar, do sugar baby. now. You can't mix it in. you got to muddle it with the fruits. Hey, so this has been a did busy you, weekend. Did you, I, did you, did you I, hear me? i got to muddle it with fruits. That's all I wanted to hear. That's all. Okay, we can now move so, forward. I have muddled Muddling so many fruits with in my fruits. life. It's not even funny. You muddle it with the fruit. Toot, toot, you muddle oh, it. Oh, Lord. So, hey, John Lars Rivera. I just saw you. I shaved my head. See. <laughs> um, so we're here on a Sunday night. Where are you going? I'm getting some sugar. Oh Lord, he's getting some sugar. I'm just gonna sit here and drink while he gets the sugar. Well, you can talk. Mm. There are things you can say. This has been a great weekend. Actually, a great past week. Uh, lots of things have happened for us. Um, the big, I think, one of the big things for us mm-hmm. is that we celebrated 25 years of being together. What? 25 years, honey. We celebrated the 25 years of us being together. <laughs> us is together. I think you're lying. You're lying to all those nice people. I I know, right? It doesn't seem like it's been that long. Let me see who's here. Hey, we're Shepard Love, Barbara Haas in the house, John Lawrence Rivera, David Landau. See, I was looking for? I was looking for some agave syrup. Senuel Tiki Smith. How you doing, baby? Good to see too. you. Yeah, we're talking on top of each other. You hey, it's, it's, it's big sister Karen Buster's here. Hi. Hey. Karen, hey Karen. Are you putting some more brandy in here? I'm putting brandy in it. <laughs> All right. As my mother would say, let's have a float up. I'll take a float. Here. I don't know there why I made my mother from the just south a bit of a float in, in that second. Did you hear us? A little brandy. A little brandy on top. Because it just doesn't make sense unless you know, have a little bit more booze. Have a little mm. more brandy. I couldn't find sugar, so I'm putting in booze. So that happened. We celebrate 25 Michael years. Michael Tozan is here. I haven't thought about Michael Tozan. Totes, what's up, you baby? You did like 15 plays with him back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Um, I got to tell y'all, um, with the exception of like celebrating our 25 years, Uncle we Barbara saw Hustle. some amazing. She has this beat. Today's the day I met my partner 59 years ago. Barbara Haas. Babs. Barbara Haas. Babs Haas. Um, Insane. We saw a lot of really good theater one of them being it closed today so you can't go see it, it was kim's convenience directed by our friend john Lawrence rivera i didn't even see it and I it, it was down. so just so heartwarming and beautiful and i was just like i was blown away by it we saw uh our other dear friend john Lawrence rivera also has the first boozing in the song boozing with gays the second boozing uh the, the high notes in the boozing that's definitely warrant she opened in a play called uh, Nina Simone for women, and she is just she illuminates. Oh, the here, stage. Give me your glass. She illuminates illuminates the stage. I'm not orange juice. This is now not booze. This is just a little orange juice. Thing. That helps. Not tasting. All right, let's see. Delightful. We saw all this theater. What else did we see? Well, we we've been we've else. been doing a lot of things. What did we see? We saw something at the taper. We saw Search of Intelligent Life with Cecily Strong. We've hey, seen. Billy. I saw Lucia at the at the Opera House, which was 
just remarkable. I mean, it really has been a lot of yeah, a lot of really good a lot theater. of good theater. And I, you know, it, you know, even if something didn't totally float my boat, what I feel like I saw in all of these productions is I saw a lot of good people put good effort and good work into things. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, you go, well, there's definitely talent here, or there's definitely something. They were on that stage. They were on. Well, but I mean it more so, more lit- legitimately than in that Eartha Kitt way. <laughs> they were on that. Stage. You were on that stage. Yes. So. There's that. Oh, so are you ready for the first image? What's the first image, Boo? Well, the first, I, you're the one that likes doing this. I'm not a big fan. I don't know what the know. first image There's is. There's your first image. Oh, we lost two legends this week. Two, two, two legends. They turned. Uh, we lost Miss Loretta Lynn and Miss Judy Tenuta. Now, I know you all know Loretta Lynn, know her story. Sissy Spacek played her in the movie. One Cole big Miner's one, Cole Miner's daughter. Yep. She won the Academy Award. It's a lot of just really, really fun, good Can stuff. Can I tell you something? Movie. I was looking for, and tell me who remembers this. I was looking for the Crisco ad that Laura, because you know she did like five hundred million Crisco ads back in the day. But it was the Crisco ad where the her daughters, her twin daughters, Piggy and her. Paggy. It's like Paggy and Patsy. Paggy, Paggy and Piggy, Piggy. Patsy Piggy and Paggy. And Paggy. I don't think anyone's Piggy. <laughs> But I went, and my daughter's Pets, Patsy and Piggy, and I was trying to find it, and I couldn't find that one because that that was that was my child. I, go, I felt like I saw that commercial five hundred. Oh, we saw it a hundred times. times. Crisco. Yeah. And now every time I see Crisco, all I think about is the eighties. Bum bum. Oh, you know what that you know what that calls for? What's that? Here, you're gonna oh, well, say, I know. say the eighties oh, one more time. The eighties. <laughs> <laughs> You're adding sound effects now? I totally forgot. Well, what's weird is it didn't catch the whole bump up. So our, our child, child is coming. Is so Hello, Maxwell. Hey. We're doing our podcast. We want to come on and say hi. Well, they can't uh, they're say hi with their the friend Gallo. They're in from Pittsburgh, San Diego. Well, that is what's happening. Max, come say hi. They spent a lot of money. I can see the little ones. Oh, look at the children. Look. Oh, my gosh. He's, oh, that's very, oh, nice. very hot to you. Oh, okay. Yes, she did. You said, well, she barely has any support right there. There's milk. No, no, no. What's this guy? Milk. Milk, milk, lemonade. You know what I'm not? Lemonade with that? Wait, look at this point. Look at the lemonade right in front of the Read a tell him. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So, are you are you dropping off a new one? All right, take it down. Tell your mommy said thank you. All right, we'll see you soon. All right, so I want to get back. Can we go back to Judy's Judy Tenuta for a second? Do you want her image? Uh, yes, bring that image back up. I have to say, I really don't know Judy Tenuta. I knew of her name. I don't think I've heard any of her comedy. Oh, so Judy Tenuta. Judy Tenuta. Uh, Performed a few times on a bar I worked at the problem called Berlin. Oh. And I got to know Judy a little bit then. And then during the pandemic, about a year and some change ago, there was a rec- we did a recording of a brand new um, album that's being opt uh, being optioned for an off-Broadway run. And Judy was in the recording session with me and we had a blast. And she just she is she made us weirdos feel that we were in the right place. That's what she did. I just want to say, you know what, girl, ride, ride that all out. Ride it all out. Jeffrey Warren is here tonight. Look at that. Hey. Um, oh, oh. Yo, this is coming. It's coming. It's here. We are back in the black. We are back in black. Now, I have to say, is this one of your... Like top three movies when it's on TV, you have to watch it all. I have to watch this all the way through. Uh, Not this movie because this is Sister Act three. Right, but I mean, we get another. I I mean, the franchise and well, number one. I I don't think you've seen number two as much as number one. I've seen number two. Oh no, I've seen number two. Now my question is, I I imagine that Maggie Smith is not in this. God of mercy, God of love. We have to to interact too. It can't just be you performing. Well, I talked about. See if I do this though to interact, I'm not seen. I'm just like you just made me whiter. I'm Whoopi Goldberg's body. You literally made me whiter when. Oh, see now I'm darker. No, do that again. Get near me. I didn't think anything could make me. If you get near me, I get whiter. Come on, test test it out. And I'm whiter. Now go away. And I darken it. 
<laughs> I don't understand. I'm making you whiter. That's kind of. Um, hey, Cindy. Because, so, you know, your privilege is evidence. That's it why. Is. So I can't wait for this. I can't wait for this. Bette Midler, Whoopi Goldberg, Kiki Palmer. Come on now. It's like a gay weight dream. It's a gay weight dream, y'all. Come on. That's a triumvirate. Tr- a fierceness. Got another Shit. image. Oh, we, we're doing images today. Y'all. I do. I like doing this for you. Oh, I like doing this for Michaela you. Michaela Cole. Yes, Queen. Yes, yes. So she's going to yes. be in Wakanda Forever. Yes. Oh. And um, she's playing the character of. I have it all right here. Anika. And she's playing Anika. And what she said was, she's thrilled that her character is queer. Because um, she is from Ghana, and evidently the uh, the Gian, Ghana Gaini, Ghanaese. Gaini, I'm not quite sure how to say that, but the laws in Ghana are incredibly strict against LGBTQ individuals, and so she knows that Wakanda Forever will play well in Ghana, and she's glad that she can be the representative of LGBTQ. L, I'm not saying it, but, 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 but LGBTQI plus. Thank you, the uh, population. So she's doing that, and I just love the fact that she's willing to be an ambassador of sorts, and also look incredibly amazing. She's going to be on the cover of Vogue can, in I, November. By the way, that. look at that Vogue cover. Look at that Vogue cover. Yeah. So one of the things, I, I, you know, we first uh, became aware of Michaela Cole with her first. Um, TV show Bubblegum. There's Bubblegum. Bubblegum. And then, and, the um, oh, I just threw it out of my head. Yeah. Um, but, but she was nominated for an Emmy for that yeah. one. This, and, uh, um, but it, the thing is, is that she is what is known as not a classic beauty. Look at that picture of her own Vogue. Well, let's go one more time. She is a classic beauty. So we got to stop using the word classic. She's just a beauty because classic I agree. beauty. I don't like classic the word beauty class. has I, always been about white. I don't white like folks. that you call. It's always been about white. I don't folks, like but that classic she beauty. Is. She's a beauty. She's a beauty. Period. That sister is gorgeous. So Michaela Cole uh, opens up the fact that we are in yesterday actually was International Lesbian Week. Now I actually do not know if Michaela International Cole, Lesbian Day. Day. Yes, I don't know if she is a lesbian. Do you know? Not, I don't know. Almost, but she's I playing one on TV. But she's playing one in, in Wakanda forever. But we. But this is international. Yesterday was International Lesbian Day. So what up, lesbians? You had a day. And in honor of International Lesbian Day, Ooh. I have a video. Forgive me. I... I come from an island of all women. Work it out for yourself. <laughs> No, I don't know what that's from, do you? That's Wonder Woman. But I know it's Wonder Woman, but what is the show? Is it Wonder Woman animation? I don't know. I saw I that clip what and I was like, is. what a better way to celebrate Lesbian Day. I, got, I, have, Lesbian I have a better way. You have... He doesn't, he doesn't I don't know. know. I don't and know. as promised, here are your Scooby Snacks. Jinky. Jinkies. Velma is officially lesbian, lesbian gay. She's a and lesbian. people are lying, are loving it. I'm sure there are those that are hating it. I choose to look at those who are loving it and they're thrilled that she is out of the closet. Now I can tell you what that's from. That's from Trick or Treat, Scooby Doo. And the person that Velma is in love with is the character's name is Coco Diablo. Coco Diablo. I don't think she's good. <laughs> I have a feeling she's a. Oh, she's Velma's, an is evil. Velma going to get her heart broken? I don't know. It's, she, we have to watch it. Coco Diablo sounds like an evil lesbian. <laughs> or she pretends to be the evil lesbian, but then actually turns out to be like good. We all. It's a. It's a. Red, it's a red herring. Could be. We. You know. We have to watch no, it I to, to find I, out to, I, I said, Max, come here. And, and Max came in the room. I said, I just put that clip together. This is like three days ago. I said, I want to show you something I'm showing for Boozing with Gays. Of course, you know, I have to set it up like it's only 12 seconds long. I don't want, because, you know, there's always the, the teenage. <sighs> and so Max sat down and watched it. And afterwards, she, they, sorry, they squealed. They're like, oh, is it happening? I went, it's happening. I didn't do anything. Oh, the other series is I May Destroy You, Michaela Cole's other series. Is I may destroy you, which yeah, is I may brilliant, you. brilliant. Now we're so, on to things. So, well, we're talking about Scooby Doo and Trick or Treat Scooby Doo. What are we going to talk about now? We're talking about Halloween urban legends. Dun 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 dun. Okay, look, hey Damone, hey nephew. All right, so let's, let's, you don't have to enter. Let, don't, let, I, let it start with the clip, and then you get to say whatever you want. Yeah, we're going to start with want. the Halloween clip. This is Lara Trump. I'm going to say it one more time. Lara Trump. Not Lara. 
Could be. On Fox. You have to ingest it. Yeah, you look at the police officers who, when they just pat people down and they find it, if it touches their fingers, they, they literally go into shock and almost die mm -hmm. from it. Some, I think, have died from it. The, the, the idea that you could have a kid anywhere in America, if, if one child dies from this on Halloween, I got to tell you, we have to take action to stop this right now because parents are terrified and we have no answers. What are we supposed to do? They're going to go trick-or-treating. So, so Democrats ruin Halloween, too. We, we ruin Halloween. Hey, Let's Gloria. See if that works better. See if that works better. If you guys, right, let us keep better. letting us know in the comments if we are jumpy and without sound. We think we. We just need it. to know. See, I just I, I, this isn't working clearly, and I'm not sure why. I don't know. Our Yeti is. I know, but I think this would work. So. Let's look at the check your sound. Can you hear the sound? Can you Can hear you, us now? That's better. that's better. Thank you very no, much. Thank you for letting us know. She can't hear. That's All right, better. better. Thank so you, Hutch. This is our Yeti. Our Yeti is maybe it wasn't totally. I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to move you out. Okay. Of the way. Uh, while we're doing that, I'll just show my shirt. I just want to point that out. This is my new shirt. Understand that. All right. So I'm not sure what's going on with our sound. But I have noticed it's acting. Oh, John Lawrence first. This is much better. Hey, Consuelo. Bum, we love you. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. All right. So there's a study. There's, these, these things don't happen. They don't happen. Well, no, no. Stop. So like I said, it's not that they don't happen. They happen in a much lesser degree than what people say. So the, the, I think what the bigger thing is the Republicans. I'm going to go back to the Republicans and specifically MAGA, Donald Trump Republicans, which I imagine That's just Republicans. Laura slash Lara is a I can't, they don't have anything to promote. They have nothing to promote. All they can promote is fear. So we're coming on Halloween. So what can we hey, promote? Bobby. Let's promote fear. Let's do that Halloween thing where there's all this stuff in the candy or people trying to poison us. And what can we talk about? Oh, <gasps> this rainbow fentanyl. Well, yes, that's the new fear. I mean, and it, funny how it's rainbow. So it's like it's the gay fentanyl. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm I'm, saying. I don't know where to go with that one. I don't know. But I'm sorry. There is, you know what? Look, anyone who knows me, no, I'll tell you this. There's no drug dealer I know in the world who's just giving away drugs. Well, that was the article that I read. You know, if they're about $100 a tablet... They're not going to give. Ain't nobody not giving go, away drugs, hey, y'all. This looks like candy. Why don't you take it? It's out of my pocket. And because if I got a hundred dollar fentanyl, yeah, fentanyl, whatever it's called, hey, I'm not going to take it. So basically, Lara, Lara, fentanyl, fentanyl, drama, drama. We have a lot of we don't know how to say stuff. things. But guess what else happens on Halloween? What else happens, honey? 
well, there's there's Hocus Pocus 2, which we've talked about on the show, is coming out. Hocus, well, it's already out. And there is and a mom in Texas who's very much against Hocus Pocus 2. A worst case scenario is that you unleash hell on your kids. It grieves me, the thought of exposing our kids to darkness. The whole movie is based on witches harvesting children for blood sacrifices. I believe whatever comes in our TV screens, there are things attached to that. I've seen for myself the things that I've watched with my eyes or heard over a TV screen, they become manifested in, in real life. If you, you're watching this, just start thinking. Start thinking for yourself and even overthink. My favorite line, start thinking for yourself and even overthink. Let's really think that into the ground. Sabine, this woman is crazy. That's all I'm saying, Sabine. She's she crazy. She was beat, though. Did you see her? I don't but know. She crazy. The makeup artist went anyway. Bam, we're going to do you up, lady. She crazy. You, okay, so, this is yours. You wanted this one done. So tell right. me why. Because I just go, oh, here we go again. Another person talking crack. Like, you know, we used to be, used to be, oh, my Harry Potter. We can't have Harry Potter because they're wizards. La, la, la. It's devil. I need, and I'm throwing this question out to y'all. Y'all ready? Because I need, because I know there's a couple of religious folks out here. Why? Yes. Why do we keep using fear and the Bible to scare people? Because she's well, I know talking why, about, I know she's why ta- politics do it. Because what she's talking about is that she's saying that watching a movie is going to enter your being through the TV set. Through the TV set. It's gonna- and it's going to steal basically steal your soul. And turn you well, evil. You're, you're, you're opening the door to hell is the worst Opening thing the can. door to hell. <laughs> it's like, you're you're going to watch The Exorcist. Next thing you know, you're possessed, basically, is what's We've all happen. been... Okay, if watching The Exorcist yeah. is what makes us possessed, I'm... Well, I, people well, already say I, I'm I possessed, think, so I, think you are I don't know. Possessed. People already say you I'm You might devil. not be the test case everyone needs I know, to, right? To I can't figure out which glasses to wear. I can't figure out why our mic isn't working. There's a lot of... We can't, There's a lot of we can't figure out. All right, I am jumping ahead... Do you know what happened this week, Michael Shepard? It was Paris Fashion Week. Did you I know that? I enjoy Paris Fashion Week. And we have a cousin week. who went to Paris Fashion Week. And I hope, you know, wish Aaron all the best. You know that, right? I know. Did you see our all cousin, the pictures? Oh, all the pictures. Our cousin is at Paris Fashion Week. And, it's, and I just, gorgeous. Aaron Fader, she does jewelry. You can go online. I'm sure she's AaronFader.com or AaronFader.something. But she does, she went to Paris Fashion Week, worked crazy hard, and sent a lot of awesome pictures online. So I'm thrilled for yeah. her. So, do you know what Paris Fashion Week um, basically collided with? I don't know. Hey, Peter. Calendar? What? Fat Bear Week. Now, I think I know the bear you're thinking of. This is actual. Oh, this is not bears. Well, okay. Let me give you information. This is the time of year when bears bulk up because they're about to go into hibernation. So it's the fattest time that they will ever be in the calendar year is right about now. So, and there's there's Katmai National Park and Preserve in King Salmon, Alaska. They have a of thing. Of course it's King Salmon. I, don't you love the fact there's a place called King Salmon, Alaska? I think that's amazing. And by they the way, it's thing. salmon, not salmon. It's Fat Bear Week. Look at October those bears. So you can actually go online. I'm going to give you a banner. Here we go. You can go online to right here, and you can vote for the bear that you like the most. Explore.org. That's the fat bear. Fat bear week. Give some hyphens in there. But I want to compare, ready, some of the people at Paris Fashion Week with some fat bears. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this. And I'm not, Let's see what happens. I'm not commenting on the people in the fashion that they are fat or they're bears. Or I just decided to pair people up. I do like a fat and, bear, though. I just want to see what you all think. So, all right. So, so the first doing. fat, first celebrity versus fat bear is Janet Jackson at the Tom Brown show versus 480 Otis. Oh, see. But this is what Janet's giving. Janet's giving, you know, she's giving Matilda realness. She's, you know. <laughs> she is. Look at that bag. I don't think there's anything in that bag. 
<laughs> like, What's in that purse, girl? There's a lipstick. That's it. There's a lipstick in her but phone. Look at 480 Otis. Hey, Glenn. Isn't he gorgeous? Oh, 480. I'd vote for. Okay, so. I, okay, you know, if I had to vote between the two of them, I got to give it to Janet Jackson. No. Because she's, you know. Well, you might give it. So he's believed to be the oldest regular male bear at Brook Falls um, in, the, in the competition. Because there's only 12 bears in the competition that you can vote for. But Otis is one of them. My second is Natalie Portman at the Dior show versus 747. 747. Well, I don't. What is what is Natalie Portman wearing? I think she's wearing a stewardess outfit. <laughs> <laughs> what is she wearing? Like a, a stewardess in mourning is what I kind of thought. Hi, welcome to Death Airlines. Seven forty seven is named. He is because he is literally the largest size of a seven forty seven, the largest bear, and he is nicknamed Bear Force One. Oh, he's estimated at fourteen hundred pounds. He's won many years at the Fat Bear contest. Oh, isn't that nice? This is Jaden Smith at the Stella McCartney show versus 435 Holly. <laughs> I just didn't know what was on his head. Um, it confused I, me. Um, okay. I will say there were some other pictures of Jaden Smith at some of the other shows. He looked awesome. Hey, Dion, welcome. I, I kind of thought saw this as humorous. All right. Um, I Okay, I'm giving it to 435 Holly. Well, she is the queen of Cat Mai, Holly. and she won the 2019 Fat Bear Champ. Oh, she's so. a winner. Look yeah. at her. She's a winner, they baby. They say she's downright Rubenesque, was what they said. This is a hard one. This is Journey Smollett uh, at the Louis Vuitton show. Which, later, looking I fierce, Vuitton. I will say. Versus 854 Divot. All right. I mean. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know. Look at the. I think Journey Smollett is giving me just. She's giving me Wonder Woman meets um, a printer without running out of ink. <laughs> And Divot. Look at Divot. Just searching Divot's for really salmon. Divot's really cute. Look but I, I gotta give it to Miss Dirty Smollett. Okay. All right. And then uh, last one I have is Erica Badu at the Valentino Show. Erica Badu. Versus 901. Oh, look at 901 now. Just, just All right. Awesome. I'm gonna go with the tie. And 901 is the 747 of the female bears, they say. She's okay. the largest female. Oh, that was a good thing. Thank you for doing that. I had any, no idea. There was really no snark. The only snark I really had about any of the outfits was Jaden Smith and looks like Sister Betrill. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. With How that. do you solve a problem like Maria? We're going back to nuns. We're doing nuns a lot today. Um, also at Paris Fashion Week, we can't get around it. We have to show it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. So weigh in on this, people. So, um, Kunye West, or, you know, Yee, but I prefer to call him Kunye. He has his line, Yeezy. Kunye West. This was at the Yeezy show. D- decides show. to wear and put his models in. With the, and with, uh, all his models said they just did it, except for one, which was Jaden Smith. He walked no, away. No, 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 Jaden Smith. No, he wasn't a model. Who was it? It was Iman or someone. No, Tara Banks. Did not wear a shirt. Some major model was in his show. No, and Jaden Smith. No, Jaden Smith. Smith walked away. He was yeah, a, was, he was an audience member. He oh, he a walked model. away. Okay, but so he, he was this. he was Jaden Smith was in the audience. The White Lives Matter shirt came out. Jaden Smith walked away. He was in the audience. He was so Kunye player. puts yeah. these models in this White Lives Matter shirt, and this is this is you know I'm pleased. Just one more time, just, and this is with Candace Owens too. One of you know we. She's on our show all the time, the way we talk about that. We have one. to uh, queue up our Candace Owens thing. Yeah. We have to have that for today. Well, so it's, it's these two um, folks, I, it's hard. This is so hard to speak on because, look, white lives have never not mattered. They're the only lives have that have mattered. We understand that. We get it. So what Kanye West, Kunye, is doing is trying to sell his brand. He is trying to get attention because he's an egomaniacal piece of shit. That Negro needs to just go away, period, period. And he can take Candace skanky ass Owens right along with him because they do not. They are pandering their blackness to make them uh, to get approximate. Oh, I can't get the words right. What they are doing is that they are trying to uh, using their uh, proximity to whiteness 
by doing this to make themselves feel better. When in reality, all that's going to happen is in that one moment, the white person who is so happy this is happening right now, these particularly the MAGA folks are so happy this is happening right now, let them do one thing and they are out. They're done. They're done. Kanye Kanye West should be done right now because even he's he's like uh, posting anti-Semitic rhetoric online. He's just he's our Jewish of... brothers and sisters. Y'all ain't gonna fall for that. Y'all ain't going for that. Really? It... I'm just the thing please come I, for him. I please get like Kanye. You know, you know when you put when, when we put out. Well, we I did not was not part of this, but when Black Lives Matter became was out there, it took white people, some white people. Uh, many white people, a long time to understand what it was referencing, that it didn't negate them. It just was, we have to put focus on is something that is going on. This is that's a particular problem in this All country. lives can't matter unless our lives matter. Yes. And so I felt like we we're that, you know, Black Lives Matter got traction. I felt like more white people were listening. And then when this comes out, what that basically gives the privilege to those white people who don't want to listen to it to go, oh, you know, I don't have to pay attention anymore because I was told by a black person that white lives matter, too. So I we don't claim his ass or Candace Owens. Well, that, I'm not saying whether you claim it or not. I'm just pretty much sure that that's going to happen. It's It was really it was pretty doggone. I kind of want to juxtapose this, if you don't mind. All right. So that happened in Paris Fashion Week. We, I am thrilled because the Supreme Court kind of opened this last week as well and started hearing cases. There's basically saying Katanji Brown Jackson has spoken the most of any of the justices on the bench. Have you heard that? I didn't hear that of part. All no. it, she's the one that is speaking the most. So literally, per, you know, freshman, freshman, you know, whatever Better. justice and she is like bam out the block talking about stuff so the one of the cases they're dealing with is merrill versus milligan which centers on whether a state must create a second which state was it was alabama but must create Always a second alabama. majority black congressional district so basically alabama which has a, a huge black population and they were basically run by white folks and they were redistricting so as so that so that so that the majority of the districts are run by white folks, and then the fewer of them, maybe the one is run by black folks. But that's it. And so what some of the people have brought up said, "Hey, actually, you redistricted redistricted in such a way that it's actually not cool. It's it's you know. So you got we got to go in and anyway. So that's what's before the Supreme Court. And um, you had these uh, hey, Craig. Alabama representatives are trying to impose basically racial gerrymandering." in a huge way Shocking. and they're justifying it. This is the thing that's they're justifying. They're like bringing up the 14th amendment, all of this saying, well, actually it's racist to consider the black men in these districts. We have to not do that in order to redistrict because otherwise we're being racist if we consider them. And Katanji Brown Jackson had something to say. Do you want to hear what she said? Oh, baby, do I ever. So she, you know, a lot of these new justices are originalists. They believe in what the exact written word was. And Katanji, you moved my thing around. I so, did. And Katanji goes, well, let me be an originalist right back to you. So this is what she said. Um, it, there is no visual. It's just her talking. But it, I found it illuminating and awesome. I looked at the uh, report that was submitted by the Joint Committee on Reconstruction. Reconstruction, which drafted the 14th Amendment, um, and that report says that the entire point of the amendment was to secure rights of the freed former slaves. The legislator who introduced that amendment said that, quote, unless the Constitution should restrain them, those states will all, I fear, keep up this discrimination and crush to death the hated freedmen. That's not um, that's not a race neutral or race blind idea. Check that out early. I, I, this is we have a new background thing on, on this thing, and I, it's sort of you want to do the question right thing and kind of anyway. But you got the, she was basically going back into history and bringing the history into the courtroom and saying to them. So now talk about what, so now that I've brought this to the table, now tell me your point. And they would be, well, but it's racist if we include black people. And she would cut it down and go again. It was really kind of a magical thing to hear. Uh, black girl magic. So I, I'm sure that black girl magic. And by the way, wearing this shirt that says black men matter is not uh, 
saying that black women don't matter because they all matter more than we do. That's what makes that a point. Um, we have a new segment. What's it called? Oh, I can't tell you. I have to show you. Oh. Talking to us in the chat, though, and let us know if the sound comes back on, please, as we try to fix it. So let's, let's move the computer <coughs> back computer's closer. closer because we're using the <coughs> microphone. So, like, all of a sudden, it's like our base is right there. I know. And we do have, I don't know, we're, should we just go keep going forward? Even it's, though it's echoing. Oh, but that's because we're using the computer. It's so weird. Hmm. When I had the microphone felt like that, that was. Check all the cords. Just check the cords. I don't have them. That's yeah, not it. That's that not it. Oh, no, you can't unplug that. That would be... Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what do we want to do? I don't know. We could stop and continue. I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. I don't know. So you guys can let us know in the uh, comments, though. What's going on? Let us know. That sounds good. That sounds good now? Oh, okay, so oh, thank you, Jason. The clips good. are full volume, but your audio sounds like you're inside a tin can. I feel like we we got one of these Yeti microphones which we just unplugged to do this. So right now the sound is going to like the highest. You said it's good when we lean forward. Yeah, we were back. Maybe that was the uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So hopefully this will work out. All right. Well, so so and I just have to. Now read. there's no sound. I don't know what's happening. All right. We can end the broadcast and start it up. So I'm gonna do this. Frozen. Now we're frozen. We're not coming at this. We're gonna do the thing, right? Well, no, but also right to the thing. That's the thing. All right. So unplug the mic. Lizzie says unplug the mic. The mic says unplug. The mic says unplug. The mic says unplug. All right. Good. All right. So I'm gonna try it. All right, testing one, two. How are we doing now? Mosquito. Is that how, how is that if I talk like that? Yeah, it is on. I mean, it's, I mean, it's doing the thing. It's not that loud. That's now they're saying that's better. Maybe that we do need them. Maybe we're yes. just close. Good. Everyone's like, yes. Okay. So we're going to move closer we're to gonna, the microphone. We're going to be, we're going to, we're going to talk gonna like that. This. So. so just, so we're here now. So we're at two. Um, sounds like rump. All right, sounds like rump. Did you like that graphic? That was funny. Did you like that? That was great. All right, well, what are you going to show? This sounds like rump. So this was a couple of weeks ago, but it just well, it epitomizes just where we are in the world, I think. Uh, but I have to find out. Here we go. You had said on Truth Social a number of times you did de declassify. I did declassify. Yes. Okay. Is there a process? What was your process to declassify? It doesn't have to be a process, as no. I understand it. You know, there's different people say different right. things, but as I understand, there doesn't have to be. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it, because you're sending it to Mar-a-Lago or to wherever you're sending it. And there doesn't have to be a process. There can be a process, but there doesn't have to be. You're the president. You make that decision. So when you send it, it's declassified. We, I declassified everything. 
<laughs> I don't even know what to say to him. Hey, Gabrielle, my, my I, TV I think, daughter is can, on. Can you imagine if if someone said, "Well, I I thought I paid that bill because I thought about it. I thought about it." And, and we know it's paid. an old clip, but it's just it's just it's annoying. It's fun. well, it's old. We it's haven't we haven't talked about it. It's we haven't like, talked about it, but it's just annoying. And we didn't it's, talk about Tis James. We didn't talk about you know the two hundred fifty so million dollars in New York. I mean, you know, Trump is kind of well, he's a lot is happening. I there. don't know what's going on. So, okay, what else you got? Well, but here's the thing that really strikes me. Uh-huh. And we've all known that he has desires to be like an oligarch or whatever. You know, he wants to be a monarch, right? He doesn't want to be a president. He wants to be a monarch. He just wants He must own he everything. Wants, he wants to think something and then the Pepsi appears or whatever it is. But I didn't realize he wanted to be omniscient. Like he wants to be a god. I think if I think about it, then it's true. Oh, fuck him. Oh my god. Fuck him God. and his horrible ass children. So this also happened last month at an Ohio rally. It's an image. Um, it's that weird one finger salute thing that looks very Nazi like to me. I mean, does that? I'm sorry. Does that image scare you at all? Um, no, it doesn't scare me. And I'm gonna so tell you, you why. I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't scare Please, me. Please, I want to know because. I know how a huge swath of white people in this country are. I know already. I've been living with it for, you know, 50 plus years. But that doesn't mean that you can't get scared by looking at a mask. I'm mass. not scared of it because I've already seen that in my everyday life. In my everyday just living as a black person in America, I see that. White people are scared of it because they're like seeing something that black people have been telling you have been there for years and years and years, and now you're seeing it and it scares y'all. I've not seen that type of, oh, I don't even know what the word is, but just that kind of like cultish energy in that way that that is just absolutely, I mean, it's white supremacy. It is, it's just, I haven't seen that. And it scared the hell out of me. And the other thing is, so there was that weird music that kind of went along with it. And this week, the guy who wrote that music, his name is Will Vander Cromert. Um, the song was Mirrors. And, and, and it was this weird, dirgy, strange music. And this guy basically writes music and then he sells it online. Like you can use it for your benefit or you can use it, I guess, for your political rally or whatever. Um, but you got to pay me. And they never paid him, of course, right? This guy in Finland took the music, someone named Feel Good, isn't that a surprise? And made it and changed the name and named it WWG One WGA, which is a QAnon slogan, which is where we go one, we go all. But what happened this week is that that song was taken off. Did you know that it was taken off Spotify and taken off YouTube because the creator, this Will Vander Cromer, goes, um, "My music, I didn't allow it. They didn't pay for it." I don't believe in QAnon. It's not my gig. So so it's been taken off all those sites. I, I think the big, you know, and I, I see black folks in the comments copy, you know, repeating what I'm basically confirming what I'm saying. They're not scared it's of hard either. to be scared of something you've seen your entire life. It's hard to do that. It's just, it's been but in there. The, but in the gang mentality, that's the thing that I've not seen. Anybody I mean, who has looked at who, anybody who's looked up the definition of the word picnic knows what gang mentality is. White folks would get together and they would picnic or pick a nigra. I don't think that I is knew being that. hanged as, as hanging day. They would bring the kids out. No, they would bring the whole I families out, that. and they would watch black people being hung. That was called a social gathering or a picnic. I didn't know. You know, that's a French word too. Well, they they it adopted is. it from the states. They adopted it. From uh, that's the thing. So how well, can a, hey, David, how can I be afraid of something that I've seen my entire life? Right, but the picnics weren't happening during your life, were they? I'm asking honestly. Uh, no, but there's imagery that I see. Yes, the imagery has been there, there but I've the not Im seen. What I'm saying is, I'm sorry, sorry, but I haven't seen it like in this this. You know, I mean, like all the imagery that I saw of um, that type of stuff, whether it was hangings or anything like that, was of the past. Okay, so let me tell you this. Go. Okay, so let's uh, look at this. So, so you're saying you don't see this imagery. Yeah. So um, did you not see the imagery of the 60s with white police officers sticking, uh, sticking dogs on people? Yes, I did see that. Did you not see the imagery of gangs of white people around black people sitting at uh, counters? 
That's the same mentality. And it's the imagery. That that mentality, that imagery imagery has been there forever. The imagery. But again, like you just said, you didn't know the whole story about picnics. No, I didn't know that. And this whole thing. Because once again, our history is never taught. And because you just learned this, it's why they don't want CRT. Because once white folks start hearing and figuring out what has been done to us, in history, throughout history, and their kids learn this, they're going to stop and go, wait, 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 hold up. And white folks don't want that to happen. White folks don't want their children to learn uh, the truth. They don't want to know know about what happened in Oklahoma, what happened on the south side of Chicago, what happened, you know, uh, you know, that there is an entire town that is underwater because they were flooded out and killed. Black families were flooded out and murdered so that they, they have a lake in fucking, uh, uh, um, I can't think of the state right now. So that- Is that Louisiana? They, it's not Louisiana. Yeah, we did that thing the other week about, well, that was three weeks ago about Louisiana. And so the, the whatever, you can't, you, you, know, you can say that imagery scares you. It doesn't scare black people because we've seen that imagery our entire lives. It just, and that's it just, just it. I haven't seen like, it, it feels, I hear what you're saying, and those pictures are. I, I also thought of the picture of the black girl going into the the, the school, right, and and all of the black white people behind her. There just are big there are in. white people who can look at those pictures right now and see their grandparents. Yes. Well, that one woman who was, they can see their grandparents. Remember, there was that whole thing about that one woman who was really mad at this once again the black girl going into school, and and she's alive, and she is she is she is like. I'm, you know, I think she's shamed, as I recall in the article that I read. But it's, I, this still seems different to me. This weird, it feels so Nazi. It feels like this could get out of Again. control. So I, we, this has to follow. I wasn't going to do. I thought, you know, we had these things where we go, hey, we're not going to talk about this, so we're going to cut this. But the Washington Post did an article, and they basically said that it's about election deniers who are running in in the states, and in in fifty states. We have 48 states. There are election deniers who are running, and there, many of them are successful. 299 Republicans running for congressional and state offices, which are over half of the Republicans, are election deniers, and 173 are expected to win. So the reason why that image is so scary to me is because with those election deniers, and especially when you have people like the guy in Arizona who's going who could be whoever, whatever is the guy, like the Secretary of State or whatever, who's in charge of counting the votes. Well, he's not going to count the votes. He'll throw them out and say it was fake and then just say, hey, this guy won. And that is, that's when I'm nervous. That's where I'm really scared. It's like it's going to take over. You've seen that imagery in Charlottesville. We definitely when saw When this it. giant group of white people chanted, Jews will not replace us. No, you're not wrong with that. I actually went to Charlottesville they sh- they because I just felt Jews like I had to be will there. will not replace us. And that is the truth. Charlottesville is 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 very much. Come on now. Well, hold on. Don't. I mean, it's still a fear. No, it's, I mean, it's still I, a fear. I'm not saying you can't. No, let that it come down. on now was not for you. It was for. Uh, I mean, it's. That. I'm literally like, like I can't describe it. It's just hot. It's 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 scary as hell. It's scary, but not, I'm not scared because I've already seen it. I've seen this. You know, it's just there's no. You know, unless you know, David okay. said, it, "Rovember is coming." November is coming, but here's the thing. We using the imagery of you know this dystopian um uh universe with like women wearing red and all that. It's like we have to move away from that and actually get to what the real issues are. And one of the things that we have to do to get to those real issues is listen to black women because black women have already been fighting these fights. You're talking about handmaid's tale? Yeah. Listen to black women. Black women are fighting this fight for a very long time. But Handmaid's Tale is kind of the perfect, I mean, well, not maybe not perfect, but it is a tale that needs to be told. But it's a tale that was told because guess what? Hmm. Because the reason it was popular is because no one could believe that would ever happen. Yeah. No one could believe. So a white woman had to create a dystopian universe that black women have been living through for the rest of all of their lives. She created this. How many years ago? How many decades ago now? But I mean, she that's... wrote it as a story for white people. Yeah, because white people had to like, oh, I'm reading this because oh, this upsets me so much because I can't believe I would ever have to live through that. Now that shit's coming true because Rootopia or whatever they just. Um, we have so this is the top of the page, my friend. This is yours. 
I have three videos, so you tell me when you're ready to do the videos. All right, y'all. Do the video first, please. Just do the video first. Well, no, we have to set up a little. You're setting up this one. All right. So, y'all have all seen this, but we got to talk about it. Miss Christian Walker. <laughs> if you don't know who Miss Christian Walker is, is the annoying homosexual son of Herschel Walker. Now, I don't think he says he's homosexual, but now, and I don't want to shame allegedly I don't, the homosexual son. I don't son. want to shame that. We have not shamed it with other people. We can't shame You know it what? Hey, him. Matthew, you know what, though? I don't care because that's the kind of. He is. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Do you want to know? Do you know, do you know what you can shame about can shame? him? Shame is privilege. His privilege oh my is annoying God. me like that. Anyway. No anyway, continue. Uh, Chris. Herschel well, start Walker. start with Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. I mean, you give out the facts. Herschel Walker. My God, the guy basically paid for an abortion. This is where we are. You have his son who could be gay or fluid or whatever he is, who has supported his dad all through this whole time period, knowing all of Herschel Walker's secrets, knowing all of them. And his son has been there going, you know what? I'm supporting you, dad. You know what? I'm supporting you, dad. But it was the abortion thing that cracked him. And this is the video he put out. I stayed silent as the atrocities committed against my mom were downplayed. I stayed silent when it came out that my father, Herschel Walker, had all these random kids across the country, none of whom he raised. And you know my favorite issue to talk about is father absence. Surprise, because it affected me. That's why I talk about it all the time, because it affected me. Family values, people. He has four kids, four different women, wasn't in the house raising one of them. He was out having sex with other women. Do you care about family values? I have a silent lie after lie after lie. The abortion card drops yesterday. It's literally his handwriting in the card. They say they have receipts, whatever. He gets on Twitter. He lies about it. Okay, I'm done. Done. I have nothing nice to say about this human being. I have zero nice things to say about this human being. Can I tell you what bothers me the most about this? And he says it in his dialogue. He said, I have stayed silent. Now, when he's come out and he said that his dad threatened his mother, beat his mother, pointed a gun at his mother, all of this stuff. Why did he stay silent for all these years? This is the thing I really don't get. I get that maybe the you same, want your dad to win a, an election or whatever. The same but, way people mm, have stayed silent me. for Trump, the same way they have stayed silent. And then all of a sudden... They write a book. They want the book to sell. So then they go, oh, I saw this coming. And I just, I didn't. Well, I he, 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 is a, time. he is an influencer. Like, so, I mean, I, that kind of makes sense. But, but that, what I don't okay, like that. I'm, because I don't, I don't like this person at all. And my husband says, don't shame him. So I'm not going to shame well, him. Well, because I don't think, I don't want to shame him because of sexuality. I think he can be as, as whatever he is as he is. That's right. fine. I don't want to shame but him because I of that. I don't like this person as a human being. That's fine. And he is not a hero for standing up and saying, what the truth is right now. Well, because again, he should have said it at the very beginning. Herschel Walker on Hannity. They're claiming that on September 12th of 2009, that the woman has a receipt for an abortion. They're claiming that five days later on September 17th, you sent a $700 check and that you sent it in a get well card. The get well card, it looks like it's included with your signature on in the article. Have you seen it? And is that your signature? Uh, I haven't seen it, uh, but, you know, I can tell you, uh, I send out so many get well, uh, send out so much of anything. But I can tell you right now, I never asked anyone to get an abortion. I never paid for an abortion. And it's a lie. I send so many get well cards. All the so many abortions. How could I possibly remember if I sent one to a woman I had relations with who is claiming they got an abortion? How can I remember And let's go that? with the real story here. The woman, this woman, is also the mother of his 10-year-old son. And one of his sons, yeah. The mother of his 10-year-old son that he says he just didn't want to drag out because, you know, on the campaign trail, he didn't want to talk about his other kids that nobody knew about. Y'all, y'all, this, mm, I'm just, and the fact that the Republican Party has, like, said, we're standing behind our man because he, that was, that was then. Well, but let's do this. Let's switch it. Right, Reverend switch it. Warnock, ready? Let's support him. Let's do what we can. Let's write cam letter campaigns. Let's send money to his fund. Let's make sure that man wins because there is a dip in trust in Herschel Walker. 
There is. And let's let's utilize that. Let's make sure that that we get a Democrat in that position and not Herschel Walker. It's just I. Oh. But are you? But you this, is what, this is what got me the most for this week. Y'all ready? Because here's the thing. All these people in the Republican Party are standing behind Herschel Walker. Doesn't matter. Abortion. He's reformed. Um, beat his wife. He's reformed. Did this. He's a good Christian. All this rhetoric happening around Herschel Walker. When all these people are telling the truth, they're saying, nope, he's changed. He's changed. He's changed. And then we have this. What are we doing? Which is going to be my... I thought I pushed the button. One more. Here they are. Your best bet is to vote for Hershey Walker. Hershey Walker. Okay. That's Forget right. what you done heard. Uh-huh. That is distractions. Right. That's when President Trump was running. Mm-hmm. Remember all of the distractions. I remember all of he the distractions. He grabbed, he said he going to grab him by this. Uh-huh. And we was like, well, I'm so happy he grabbing somebody by, by the B, B instead of the D. By the D. She couldn't even get her fucking lines right. And not by the D. Okay. The fact that these two, uh, Champagne and uh, Rose Vines, what the fuck their names Diamond are. and Silk. You know, well, okay, hold on. Or Conan. On Lindell TV, the My Pillow Guy. I didn't even know he had a TV station. My Pillow Guy. Ha, honey, our ancestors right now. Well, but think of what they said. Michael, think of what they said. Up and going. This is what they said. They said, I'm so glad he molested a woman as opposed to being a homosexual and grabbing a man. They just said that. At least he grabbed a pee. So basically, they are promoting the fact that he molested a woman. Well, thank God it was a woman he molested and not a man. So basically, molestation is above being homosexual. That whole thing is bothersome to me. And the hair, I hate to say, bothered me. Well, that's the that's the hair they've been using. It's just that look, this I step like and fetch it show. And look, I and, and I say step and fetch it because it was a direct. It's, it's a term that was used, but I shouldn't because at least step and fetch it was able to talk about what he did and why he had to do it to make money for his family to actually to have well, the any type of artistry so what, what year whatsoever. Was step and fetch it been? Uh, that, that would like have the been nineteen thirties, and so. He, he talks about that. There, There's recorded words where he said why he did it. The same way that Hattie McDaniels was able to say, I would rather, and I, and of course, there's this thing, whether she said this line or not. So what Hattie McDaniels allegedly said, I would rather play a maid than be a maid. Yeah. You know, and that's allegedly because we don't know if it's true anymore, whether she said that or not. But. Black but, folks but during that time period had to do. The time period. You know, I mean, that's they totally wanted to be a part of the arts, of... and they had to do what they had to do. Yes. So you know, I have, I have. There's a, there's this moment of, of 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 love for these people that I go, okay, okay, I understand that. But these coons, Diamond and Silk, they're shilling, they're shilling, because they understand that if they go against. People who are already, we are already the punching bag. Black folks are already the punching bags in this country. But if they, again, they want their, they are trying to get this approximation approximation to whiteness to make them feel important. And, but they, again, don't understand that one little thing happened. They out too. They're going to be swinging with the rest of us. Honey, as Miss Billie Holiday said, those trees but those poplar trees will be filled with strange fruit if this shit keeps happening. Understand that. It's, it's Marco, we're talking about black shit tonight. What I, you doing? I can't believe you did strange fruit. It's hard to go from that to this. So we have one more thing. We're ending our show. Oh. Did you not want to end the show? No, we can end the show. You act like you want to keep talking. You want to keep talking to people? Who do you want to talk to? I was I just want people to like 
you know, talk to your family members before this and because look and vote and also and not vote. just vote, but vote. also get people to this vote in the in the states where it's necessary. It's so important. It's, a, I, it's an important. You moment. know, it's like this midterm election is more important than the presidency right now, because if we don't vote for the people. Uh, People are bad. Okay, I can't say one thing before we move on. You could, honey. So, do you know how much you can say? All of it. All of it. So, I got to say one thing. Do you all know that Winnie the Pooh is being banned? That I couldn't find, by the way. Winnie the Pooh is being banned, and you know why it's being banned? Because there are people, parents, who think that it's ungodly, and it goes against God because the animals talk, and we're only half costumes. Um, just that I we kind of skipped over this, but Barnes and Noble has a section in many of its bookstores where it says these are the banned books. Buy them here. Basically, I couldn't find the Winnie the Pooh with this. The article you sent me didn't have Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I found the article. I didn't, I didn't say it. I'm sorry. Ah, I didn't say it. But this one thing. And but you I, know, well, now you have these, now, these now books... you have me. No, no, I'm talking. Now you got me. So just to give a close up, like like Wizard of Oz, I was banned for depicting women in strong leadership positions. Captain Underpants, I was banned for promoting bad behavior. I don't know this one. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, which is a oh, great Oh my title. God, yes. I was awesome. banned for harsh depictions of racism and use of racial slurs, Wrinkle in Time. I was banned for opposing Christian beliefs and teaching occult practices. So Barnes and Noble, and not all their stores, but in many of their stores has a banned book section, which I, they've been doing this since March because a lot of that happened then. But I couldn't find the Winnie the Pooh stuff, weirdly enough. If they, you know, if we don't read, here's the thing. Our, our special needs son, the only book he ever read Captain was Captain Underpants. Indeed. That was the only books he read those books. That was it. Well, it's like me reading Mad Magazine back in the day. That was certainly bad behavior, yeah, but like, I didn't uh, go out and, I don't know, do spy versus spy on people. You know, it's just like, there, and it's like, there's it, it, so much happening right now. Why are we banning abortions? Because guess what? The population of white people are, are it's decreasing. You know, there's so much happening right now. Please vote. Please, please, please talk to people. Talk to your family because a whole bunch of y'all know who you got to talk to in your family. Go ahead and just talk to them. Do it. All right, let's end this mug. Okay, so there is a man. His name is Sam Cox. He is Mr. Doodle. <laughs> Cox. Cox. He is Mr. Doodle. And he bought a 13-room mansion in Wait, Kent. Wait, his he last got... name is Cox and he's Mr. Doodle? He's Mr. Doodle. I'm 13. <laughs> he has been working on his house. I'm going to show you a video. All right, okay. And he's been working on his house, and it is he's he's actually even just I got to put this out there. He's actually found someone to marry from Ukraine, which I found just sort of a side note. But I'm blown away by this animation. I want to know what you would think about oh, living okay. in this house. Here we go. It's like living in a Keith Haring world. I don't think I could. I think I would kill someone. I think I would. I think I couldn't go into any room and find calm. I can admire what he did. I actually can admire what he did, but I couldn't live there. I'm just wondering about thoughts. What? what it is what, very Keith Haring. Someone said that. What? Yeah. It's I. Um, but it's. We're having our house painted right now, and we're worried about the colors of just one. You know, we're not worried about that color. We're not worried color about the color. Gorgeous. But now we got to figure out the color of the door that's like going to go with it. The trim and the door. And what, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, can you? I know. And that video is longer. It's the video, really, the video starts upstairs in the bedroom, and all of a sudden, like the bedspread gets done, and like, and every aspect is closed. Everything gets in this black and white, and I'm like, I, I, I just wonder what that mind is. Is it crazy or genius? Thoughts. <laughs> No. I think I would fall down the stairs too. I agree with this sentence. I'm like, yeah, I, I think. 
Mm-mm. Anyway, that is the last. Mm. I, we did no. not talk about. I wanted to really bring up Kim, Kimberly T. Yi. I thought that was so important, but maybe we'll talk about that. Who's Kimberly T. Yi? She was. So, well, why don't we just do it? I mean, you know, oh, it, right, we're, still it, right? okay. oh we're still here talking. Okay, Candace, we're still here talking, girl. So this, okay, this, I'm, I'm, and I, 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 we kind of went through and tried to cut something as we went. So there was a a treaty. Oh, the, that's who the it is. new yes. Ichota Treaty. It was 1939. President Jackson signed it into law, and basically it was to get the Cherokee Nation to move from kind of the Georgia area to Oklahoma. And they said, "Look, move there. We'll give you some money. And not only that, you can have a representative in the House of Representatives, and they won't be able to vote." But they can be part of the, you know, they can be part of the decision making or they can go on different whatever. And now 200 years later, practically, 200 years later, the Cherokee Nation's like, we want our person in there. And so they have put forth a woman. Her name is Kimberly Teehee. Um, I have a picture. Here she is. She worked in the Obama administration um, as administration official and for uh, the Cherokee Nation and for Native American culture. And basically, they're trying to get her seated. It has to go through Congress, has to go through the House. Um, there are other uh, seats in the House, like Puerto Rico, like uh, Washington, D.C. They do not have voting power. They kind of are second-class citizens in some way. But they do get to go on some panels. They do get to help for fashion laws. And I am hoping that the Cherokee Nation gets their voice heard. Let's hope so, too. So that's maybe how yeah. we end. I just want to say one more quick thing before we go. I, just, I don't know if you can hear this, but... My toenail. Oh, why did you do so that? It's so long. It's scraping against he, the floor. His toenails are like raptor nails and they rip the sheets when he sleeps. It's disgusting. You don't need to know that. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. All right, y'all. Hey. Um, uh, we'll be back next week. We, we don't know when. Week. We just don't Maybe. know when. Our schedules keep changing, but we want to be back. Maybe Sunday. Who's Who's I think Sunday. Sunday. Sunday works. Look for us on right. Sunday. Ah. I carefully warn y'all. Listen. All right, peace out.